Consider this. Farmers and ranchers across America have something in common with bees and other pollinators. They face immense pressure economically as well as ecologically and are in serious decline. Degraded soil and water health, loss of land to urban sprawl, and extreme climate events are threatening farmers' viability as well as pollinators' survival. But pollinators, like farmers, are essential to our existence and to the future productivity of the land. How can we all team up and support each other? Can we farm for pollinators? The pollinators and the wildlife, we've always, as a family, is trying to be good stewards of the land. And I, we've always believed, as, as a family, that the sustainability of the ranch has to do with that foundation. And the way we try to develop the pollinators, the wildlife, to help with the soil erosion, all of those things help with the sustainability and the future of the ranch. And so with the pollinators, we used to farm and it, it was either fallowed and the ground was totally bare or it was planted, neither of which does anything for the pollinators. And so when we went into the CRP and started doing different things with our stewardship, we found that all of a sudden the plants that the pollinators needed came back and started to grow inside this CRP. And because of that, we went from no beehives in this two mile strip to where we now probably have 15 to 20 beehives that are sitting inside of this strip. And they're here because the food source is here and also the water source is here. Through the USDA, and on this farm, we put in more than 20 miles of water lines to access areas that didn't have water before. And in this two mile corridor, there's 12 wildlife troughs. And so for the, for the water that we put in and for the pollinators that have existed, the new oak trees that are growing and are gonna turn into the new structures for the new beehive someday, um, it's it just become the perfect combination to allow nature to replenish itself. Frankly, bee populations have gone down all over the world. And bees are central to our food security. They're central to the pollination of all sorts of crops that we depend on for our health and well-being. And so in that sense, uh, we need to do a lot more to protect the health of honeybees and the native bees that are so critical to our food security. You know, there are 20,000 species of bees in the world, and here in the United States there are about 3,600 species. The honeybee is just one of those, and it's not even a native uh, to the United States. It was brought over by the colonists in the 1600s. The European honeybee is central to just about all the major pollination services that happen in the U.S., so honeybees are central. But native bees are also critical. They provide billions of dollars worth of pollination services just on their own efforts, uh, all over North America, and 28% of those native bees are in decline, and so that's where we've really got to focus a lot of our efforts as well. And bees are really a keystone species, so if they are healthy, chances are the ecosystem is healthy, chances are you've got a good diversity of flora and fauna and maybe other critters, and those bees really are central. They're kind of like the canaries in the coal mine. My name's Scott Park. My company's Park Farming Organics. I farm on approximately 1,700 acres, spread over about seven miles on 26 fields. I've been farming organically for 32 years. A lot of the operations I do are somewhat concerned or giving emphasis on trying to create a balance 
of all sort of living and flying things. Specifically on the pollinator end, uh, we do have a couple miles of hedgerows planted. We also grow cover crops uh, extensively that are blooming. So we have in mind to try, if possible, things flowering all year round. We also tend to let all natural growth, like behind us, the oaks and, and our other fields, you know, we let cottonwoods or willows or whatever sort of wants to be on the borders, that's fine. I've been told by beekeepers that there are no more natural hives. So much of the borders of fields is neutered, that it's sterilized, that it's, that it's gone, that it's, there isn't much natural habitat. Building up the perimeters of the fields with normal life and flowering things is, is more beneficial. The pollinators are still part of the whole web of life that's going on that, that we try to work with and not against. And, and you have to have a long range view. You, you're gonna put out this money and in time, you will get it back by creating an overall healthy environment that'll have pollinators and it'll have beneficials for your insects aesthetically pleasing, you're going to have more birds around, you're just doing things to try and kind of keep things in balance in nature and not just have a sterile environment. We've been a part of studies that indicate a good pollinator population around your farm means increased yields for the things that you're growing and farmers are always interested in doing what they can to increase their yields. So my experience has been that farmers are really interested in doing what they can to promote greater health of their land and their soil and their water and the biodiversity that exists around it. I'm an almond grower. I enjoy my job. When you do what you like, you do it right. Uh, as uh, almond growers, if we don't get the bees, uh, I'll say that uh, we, we won't have no business. If we don't got a healthy pollinators, what, what is going to happen, we're just going to have the trees standing on the ground, not producing. If all the farmers, we come to the point where we get together, let's get a cover crop in each orchard and hedge rows, all those bees going to be healthier and they're going to be better for the coming year. If not, what we're doing, we're just killing our, our bees and we're gonna, it'll be the time where it won't be no bees, no crops. Like this orchard, in the middles, we cover 10 feet of plants and they flower after the almonds. So we got, they bring the bees before the flower of the almonds and they take it after the flower of the cover crop. So like this year, they left the bees for two months. The impact of pollinators on the global agricultural economy is close to $30 billion annually. And so the impacts to losing the contributions made by pollinators would be enormous to our nation's economy. I'm the district conservationist for Merced County in RCS. We develop conservation plans with private landowners that could potentially improve the habitat on their farm for pollinators or other type of species and also improve their bottom line for farming. The pollinators, they're declining. The habitat is declining. The pollinators are in trouble. Conventional agriculture, it's not really popular to provide space and habitat for pollinators. They're kind of used as a tool. But now that we're seeing the decline in bees and other pollinators, it's becoming more important to provide that habitat. When I initially did the conservation plan for this farm, and one of the resource issues that I identified was that there was a lack of pollinator habitat. So we decided to plant a hedgerow so that the pollinators would have some sort of area to forage and have a space, some sort of habitat over a long period of time. You know, it, farming for pollinators probably has different definitions depending on who you're talking to. Our family's been in this area since the 1800s. Currently, we are farming about 90 acres, which is non-highly erodible property, and we have about another 500 acres that's highly erodible that's in pollinator program under CRP. And that allows us not to farm this ground. And you can see here we have bunch grasses. 
have been reestablished down there. You'll see that kind of silver gray, that teriogonum, buckwheat, that's also reestablished. Typical year, there would be owl's clover, a lot of wildland flowers that would not be here for cultivating this. And you know, it's important. You know, during the spring in the San Joaquin Valley, they use these bees to pollinate almonds on all sorts of crop. But once they get over here, this area is used more as a recuperation for bees. Not so much to pollinate them, but to kind of give the bees a rest. I'm the County Executive Director for the counties of San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and Ventura. Conservation Reserve Program has many practices. As far as it has a practice for pollinators. So you have forage where the bees and pollinators can pick up pollen, then you can potentially qualify and get money for that practice. So having millions of acres of rich wildflowers and forages, and now all of this is available for pollinators, and pollinators help us get our food, I think it's all connected, and, and that's one of the main purposes of it. We are here in Floyd, Virginia at our Honeybee Sanctuary. Our work is and has been to create a sanctuary for the honeybees and that means that we also have to take care of the landscape because you cannot separate the bees from the landscape. Uh, if one goes, the other one goes. So caring for the landscape and uh, planting many, many different flowers for the bees, for pollen, for nectar. That is one thing that we do. So we let them build their natural home without foundation, without plastic or recycled wax foundation. We don't feed them sugar. If we feed them, if we have to feed them, we feed them honey. We let them swarm. So our winter losses are below 10% and the average is like two or three times as high. So my name is Kitty Volte um, and I'm a pollinator habitat specialist with the Xerces Society. We say, okay, how can we maximize the ecosystem services that farmers are getting from their landscape and from their farms to minimize their need for um, chemical inputs at all. So that both looks like figuring out ways to minimize the impact of pesticides that they might need to use on bees and figuring out alternatives to pesticides. So neonicotinoids are a pesticide that have been well documented to be extremely toxic to pollinators and we really heavily discourage their use basically under any circumstances. They're very toxic, they persist for a long time in the ecosystem and spread pretty readily outside of the field to their applied. There's actually been a lot of research done so they're dangerous but that's a class of pesticides that we would encourage farmers to immediately stop using. I feel like the more we learn about pollinators and pollinator conservation and the threats that are facing pollinators, the more we realize how much we have yet to learn. To me what that speaks to is this idea that we need to avoid putting ourselves in the position of needing to make tough decisions about pesticide use by devising systems that make them obsolete in and of themselves. So how to integrate bees into a farm, I think it's possible, first of all, that you realize that change has to come. And then second step is to make yourself knowledgeable. What is needed to have bees on your farm? You can have the traditional hives, it doesn't matter, but uh, to find a location that is good on your farm and to provide food for them, nectar, flowers, that is actually what is needed. Sustainability can be something that's achieved if everybody does their part. And so starting at the local level, we try to get farmers to take the first step on their farm and then hopefully it would expand to other areas of the state and then eventually the whole country. There's a cut in the road where you come through to come up to the ranch. And there's a uh, vineyard on both sides and they're both owned by different people. And on one side, you, it's, it's just left natural. And so there's that habitat. And then you look at the exact same thing on the other cut, and every year they spray it, 
and sterilize it and just hammer it to death and it looks like the moon. And so I, I know on this side, I go back to the wildlife, that there's some honeybees mixed in there and some baby birds and some nests and all kinds of things. And I know on this side, there's absolutely nothing. So those, those are the little things that, uh, that I think people could do. The relationship between farms and pollinators is symbiotic. And it's critical to our nation's food security and vitality of our land. It is inconceivable to imagine a world without bees or butterflies. So let's take action and move to secure their future and our own.